Well, the Second Amendment is once again under attack in this country. Uh, not that it really ever stopped from some folks, but we're right back in full swing now. So that uh, that St. Louis couple that you either liked them or you hated them. You either loved them or you hated them, okay? They come out on their front lawn brandishing their uh, their firearms. I think the man had an AR-15. The, the wife uh, came out with the handgun, okay? And some folks supported what they did. Other folks said, oh, what are they doing? They had no reason to do this. These protesters weren't bothering anyone. Technically speaking, they broke on to that property. It was private property. They didn't just peacefully enter that community. They had to break a gate down to do it. Okay. Uh, we are talking about St. Louis, Missouri. A retired police officer was killed during riots there okay uh the town had been set ablaze in certain areas they saw what was going on they called the police remember that by the way now okay they called the police police never came i still haven't seen any sort of footage where police came out there after they called them so the police weren't coming okay they, they were staying out of this and they didn't know what was about to happen. Now, one criticism. They shouldn't have been pointing the guns at the protesters when they were not on their property. Now, technically speaking, the, they say the sidewalk was public property, well, but it wasn't. It was property of the community, but I don't know that the sidewalk belonged to that couple. But it certainly didn't belong to the protesters either because it was still a gated community. Means anything in there belongs to the people who own property in there. And anyone who does it and is not invited, they don't want there in the first place. So that whole, well, it's a public sidewalk. Nah, that's bullshit. Private, uh, uh, public property ended the minute you broke the gate down. Okay. So what happens? They come outside holding their firearms, trying to wave these protesters off because they do not want to see their house burned down and they don't know what they're there to do, who they're there for, and what their motives are. So they come out to defend their property. What was the purpose of the Second Amendment? Some people will tell you it was there for hunting. Bullshit. It was there to protect yourself more importantly it was there in particular in case you ever needed to defend yourself from tyrannical government but at the same time it also gives you the freedom to defend your life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and protect your property okay you're allowed to have these things to protect yourself if someone you believe is potentially threatening you or may cause you harm you have full right to defend yourself with a firearm. Especially if it's a mob of people. And there's only two of you. Let me ask you something. And I don't want to have the debate on whether or not you agree with what happened. But uh, what, what did we do at the Alamo? Did we just stand there and shout at Santa Ana and his army? Did we just sit there and tell them, no, go away, go away, shoot, shoot, go away? No, they held them off. They didn't hold them off with slingshots. They didn't hold them off with rocks. They didn't hold them off with bow and arrow. They held them off with guns. It's, it, it, it's an effective tool when you're trying to protect your home from people uh, trying to potentially do damage. And again, before anyone says, well, they weren't there to damage you. If you were in that situation and you saw what was going on, you tell me your guttural instinct and be honest and don't bullshit me here. But tell me you wouldn't have potentially been at least a little nervous that they might just be there to do you some harm or do you some damage. Because I would be willing to say most people would probably be rather nervous in that particular situation. So that being said, they exercise their Second Amendment right 
to defend themselves and use their firearms. Now, the DA from that area put out a statement right afterwards pretty much just trashing the McCloskeys. Burying them, telling everyone how bad they were and that they had no reason to do this. This was just horrible and terrible. Now, let's just be honest and get down to brass tacks and tell it like it is here. Why is there such a big deal about what happened here? That was a rich, white couple even though they were exercising their second amendment it was a rich white couple but they had guns pointed at a group of black protesters let's just be honest that's what all the hysteria is about from folks right now there is a growing sentiment among more and more people that it is not just a police problem it's not just a historical problem it's a white problem let's just be honest and some people are going, well yeah white privilege white privilege they some people are just growing to the point and it's becoming more and more anything white is evil and they demonize it period if you're pale you're a problem period that's what too many people are going to they're not following the martin luther king approach they're following the louis farrakhan approach let's just be honest here that's what a lot of the hysteria over the mccloskeys really boil down to let me ask you something shoe on the other foot if a group of white folks broke down a gated community let's just say hypothetically there was a group of affluent people of color that lived into a gated community somewhere and in particularly a house with with black people come outside nervous to defend their property with guns because a group of white protesters broke a gate down and stormed into their community how do you think that's going to be received? Because I guarantee you all the people that are so damn mad about what the McCloskeys did would be singing a completely different tune. Maybe not all, but by far the overwhelming majority of them would not be bitching and moaning the way they are right now. Just wouldn't happen. They'd be singing a different tune and saying, look, they're doing the right thing. It's a good thing they ran those white racists out of here. They exercised their Second Amendment right. And if any right-winger criticized it for whatever reason, they would make that very... I thought you were pro-Second Amendment. I thought you were pro-Second Amendment. So if it's black people with guns, you don't like that, right? So, so you're really not pro-Second Amendment after all. Is that what you're telling me? Or, or, or are you telling me you're not really pro-Second Amendment there, right-winger? That is exactly what would happen. And anyone who denies that is just being blind. It would be a completely different situation. All the way around. But no. It's rich white people. Lawyers in particular. So they're not afforded that same argument. No. They, what, what they did was absolutely wrong. Matter of fact, it's so wrong that we're going to have the police raid your house and seize your firearms. For the folks out there who've been saying for years, why are you so worried about a little bit of gun reform, a little bit of gun control? That's why. That's why. Again, they shouldn't have just pointed them at the people. I've always said, you don't point a gun at someone unless you're about to shoot it. That's what I was always taught. When you point it, you better be ready to pull that trigger. You don't just point it at them as a threat. You just don't do that. Okay? 
nonetheless, their Second Amendment tossed out the window. Their guns have been seized. And yet, what's the problem here? This district attorney doesn't mind walking all over the Second Amendment of the rich white people. But she's not going to walk all over the First Amendment of the protesters. Does that not seem a little odd? Here's the thing. Now, unless the McCloskeys had those firearms illegally, what what what's the issue here? They didn't shoot anyone. They kept their firearms on their property and told what they deemed a violent or at least, at the very least, angry mob. Do not come on this property or else. Okay? Now, if they didn't buy those firearms illegally, I don't really see what your whole gripe here is. But let's examine that First Amendment right for those protesters for a moment. See, just like you all want gun reform and you want better process for how you can buy a firearm, there's a process for how you're supposed to protest. You're supposed to go get a permit for protesting. I don't buy for one second, and I don't think anyone does, it didn't happen, that these protesters got a permit to break down a gate and storm into a private community. Mm -mm, they didn't do that. So what does that mean? Quote, unquote, their protest was illegal. And even if they were doing it in public property, it would have been illegal if they didn't have a permit. Now, obviously, for of course, for all you folks who hate the police, they don't arrest all those illegal protests. I've seen quite a few where the cops just stand there, and even though it's illegal, just make sure it don't get out of hand. They just say, you know what? <laughs> Pick your battle. It ain't worth it. They're not really harming anything. It would be bad PR on us. Let's just stand back and make sure this doesn't get out of hand. Okay? So, even if it was public property, it would still technically been illegal. But this wasn't even public property. This was private property. So they broke more than one law. They weren't protesting legally, and they were trespassing, and that's destruction of, uh, of someone's property. Vandalism, whatever you want to call it. Okay, they, 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 they tore a gate down. Nothing's being done. Now, of course, the apologists, well, it's a protest. It's a protest. We're supposed to be able to protest. But again, the law says there's a legal way to do it. Now, you might not agree with that. You might not agree with that. But if you're also perfectly fine with someone... Um, again, unless evidence shows they were illegally in possession of these firearms, if you're okay with someone's Second Amendment right being just pissed on and having their gun seized, whether you like what they did or not, this isn't a popularity contest. We're talking about what's legal and what does your Bill of Rights afford you. See, this is what you all have to understand about the Bill of Rights. It ain't a fucking popularity contest. The Bill of Rights was not put in place so you could decide from one day to the next whether one of the ten hurt your fucking feelings and so you can toss it out the damn window. That ain't what it's there for. It ain't there to pick and choose. It's there to protect everyone, not just the people who believe that if their feelings are hurt, they should have it their fucking way. Law is the law. And if you don't want to live in a society where laws are followed and you don't want to live in a society where we can be civilized, if you want to live like a fucking Neanderthal, I suggest you move to a country where there's nothing but fucking turmoil all the time and there is no real law and order. I mean... Certain parts of Mexico are pretty rough. Go try it out. Seriously. This is not the productive way. But you're being extremely hypocritical if you're perfectly fine with someone's Second Amendment right being walked on, 
But you're going to gripe and complain if someone were to get in trouble for not following the laws of protest for the First Amendment. And if they were to get in trouble for doing it illegally, oh, discrimination, discrimination, discrimination. And again, I say this is discrimination because if these colors between the protesters and the homeowners had been flipped around, if it was a white mob and a black couple, this would not be talked about the same way we're talking about it right now. It wouldn't. It absolutely would not. For example, when a group of white protesters brandished their firearms and protested in what, what was it, Michigan? Michigan or, or, or somewhere up north? Everyone on the left shit all over it. All we heard was all the alt-right, the right-wingers, the gun nuts, the neo-Nazis. That's all we heard about, right? But how about that uh, militia of black people that stormed the Confederate monument? They were carrying firearms. Did these same folks say the same thing? No. No. Now, I don't know what the people who were up there in Michigan, whether every single one of them was racist or not. I don't know. Is it possible at least some of them were? Sure. But what do I know about the people that stormed the Confederate monument and were armed? What do I know about them? Not much. Is it possible some weren't racist? Sure. Is it possible some absolutely hated the ground white people walk on? Sure. I don't know. But you're talking about them in two different tones. And why is that? Why is that? I thought we wanted people to be on an even playing field here, right? I thought that the whole point was that we should have more equality. What you're not pushing for when you do this is equality. You're pushing for an inequality. You're trying to make it so that one group is above any criticism or being held accountable while another group is held accountable for things they shouldn't even be fucking held accountable for. They could do something within the law and the law could arguably be pissed on just to punish them because you don't like what they did. Whereas the other group could break three laws and walk the fuck away because, hey, we need more equality, right? That's not equality. That's just shifting the fucking seesaw to the other fucking side. You didn't level the playing field. We went from this to this that ain't fucking level this or something close to this that that's more fucking level but just throwing all the fucking weight on the other end that ain't fucking level and what the fuck's your argument well the other group needs to stay up here for so long so you can see what it feels like you're pushing for something that's going to cause division and piss people off you can say well you white people deserve that's your fucking stance. Hey, go right on ahead. Go right on ahead. Just understand, I don't want to hear about your fucking peace. I don't want to hear about your fucking foreign policy. I don't want to hear about none of that shit. If your way of solving it, instead of just making it fair, is your way of making it fair is to put the other group who you deem that has been privileged in an extremely underprivileged situation so they can experience... That ain't leveling the playing field out and calling it a day. That's taking a group of people, targeting them, and saying, we're going to oppress you for a little while and let you see how it feels. That ain't fucking level, my man. That ain't level. And all you're going to do is prod the fucking fires of another civil war in this country. And if that's what your end game is, have fun. But this is just another example of why, again, I'm not a leftist. I'm not a right winger either, but I'm not a leftist. Because this kind of shit right here is coming from people who don't live in a real world. They live in a fantasy land that was college educated to them. And they're going to fucking start a lot of problems in this country. And all this other policy shit that they want, all the Medicare for all, all these things, they're not going to get a damn bit of it. They're just going to get... The war they don't like overseas right here in the fucking homeland amongst each other and it will be ugly.